Hello, this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs, and today's video I'm going to show you how to make this chunky little basket. This is perfect for Easter or spring, great for putting goodies inside or using as a decoration. It's made out of a nice chunky yarn with a flower, and I added a cute little Easter bunny. Now, the yarn that I used is the Red Heart Soft Essentials. This is a brand new yarn. It is a chunky number five, and I love this yarn. It has got a beautiful shine or sheen to it, and it holds its shape really well. And if you want to compare it to something, the softness and uh, sheen of it is similar to Karen Simply Soft, but it's a little bit thicker and it kind of reminds me of the new, um, I think it's Red Heart Grande, but not quite so big. And it's a, they've got great, wonderful colors. And the colors are just so, um, the word I'm looking for is elegant. Because um, it just takes, you know, like this little Easter basket, measures about 8 by 6 inches. And it's just a little basket weave Easter basket. But it, by using this yarn, it made it so elegant and pretty. And, and, of course, it's washable, and it's fun to work with, and it just works up beautifully. So we're going to be using the purple and gray again, only for my demonstration. I'm going to make the basket part the purple orchid color, and then I'm going to make the trim and the flower the gray. And what you're going to need to make this Easter basket is we're going to be using our K-hook today. And the K hook is a 10 and a half millimeter hook. Try to get that with no glare. You're also going to need some sort of fun button. And I'm just going to use this little polka dot button that I have on hand. You'll also need a needle with a nice big eye for weaving in your ends and sewing on your flower and your button. And of course, a pair of scissors. And this is really, really simple. We're going to start from the bottom. We're going to work our way up, and the stitches used are double crochet, and we're going to be stitching in the back loop only on this to form this edge, and then the basket weave is formed by stitching in front posts, but don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do it, and it's really, really simple for this really pretty texture. This is a free pattern on my blog called the Chunky Basket Crochet Pattern. And I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath the video so that you can stitch, check your stitch counts and things like that. Now, you don't have to use the soft essential yarns for this basket. You can use two strands of worsted weight if you happen to have some on hand that you want to use. Um, it, two strands held together with your, still using your K-hook, to make this basket works just fine or any chunky number five yarn. I've just totally fallen in love with this soft essentials and I need to head back to Michael's because Michael's is the only place that you can find this except for the Red Heart website. So if you want to practice and you don't have some soft essentials on hand, just grab you two, you know, two strands of worsted weight number four and your K-hook and you can practice making one up. Then you can see how much you love the pattern and go get the soft essential yarns. <laughs> All right, let's get started. We're going to begin first by doing a slip knot. And then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And here's our five chains. And we're going to begin stitching in the fourth chain from the hook. And we're going to stitch nine double crochets because these first three chains, one, two, three, count as one double crochet. So then we're going to make a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. Our first three chains counted as a double crochet and then we made a double crochet. And just in case you're not sure what a double crochet is, you yarn over your hook, go in that chain or stitch, and pull up a loop. Three chains or three loops on your hook, yarn over, 
pull it through the first two, yarn over and pull it through the second two, and that's a double crochet. So now I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now I'm gonna count again just to make sure I only have 10 double crochets. Here's my chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten. I'm gonna to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. One, two, three. Now chain three on every row and round on this project counts as your first double crochet. For row two, we're going to be placing two double crochets in each of the stitches around. Our chain three counted as our first double crochet, so we're gonna double crochet in the same stitch as that chain three. So there's two. And now in the next nine stitches, we're going to place two double crochets in each stitch. So we're placing two double crochets in each of the double crochets around and then we'll join to the top of our chain three. I place two double crochets in each of the double crochets around and now I'm going to join to the top of that first chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. One, two, and three. Now for row three, oh, before I do row three, if you have a hole in the center of your basket, don't worry. When we're done with our basket, I'll show you how to close up that hole so that it looks nice and neat. So don't worry about that right now, just leave your tail. So we chained three, and on row three, we're gonna place a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to again put two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And we went from 10 to 20 stitches, and then on this row we're going to go from 20 to 40 stitches. And that's the base of the bottom of our basket. So we chained three, we stitched one double crochet in the same stitch as a double crochet, and now we're going to place two double crochets in each double crochet around. And like I said, this is the base at the bottom of our basket and we want our basket to be nice and flat on the bottom and that's why we're again doing two double crochets in each double crochet around. And then we'll join to the top of that chain three like before. So you can see it's laying nice and flat. And we'll continue this on around, two double crochets in each double crochet around and join to the top of the chain three. This is how the bottom of the basket should look after row three, nice and flat like a pancake. Now for row four, we're going to be placing one double crochet in each double crochet around, but we're going to be working in the back loops. So how do we find the back loops? If you look on your project on the top, you'll see what I call it a braid, but it's actually the chains at the very top of your stitches. And you'll notice that there are two loops on every stitch. You have a front loop and a back loop. And to determine which is your front and which is your back, your front loop is the loop that is closest to you. 
when you're holding your project and you look at it, the front loop is the one that is closest to you. The back loop is the loop that is away from you on the back side of your work. And we're going to be placing one double crochet in each double crochet only working in the back loops. So let's go ahead and make our chain three. One, two, three. We're going to yarn over and we're going to go in the back loop of our first stitch and stitch a double crochet. Here's our two loops. I'm going in the back loop only of our double crochet. Back loop only. And what you'll see when you look at it is there'll be a line where the front loop stitches are lined up. And let me show you on this other one. We worked in the back loops only and the line around the basket is formed from working leaving the front loops unworked. We worked in the back loops and we left the front loops unworked. And that gives us our line and also helps our basket sit pretty and the sides come up nicely. So we're stitching one double crochet working in the back loops only. all the way around and then we'll join to the top of the chain three. And this is what row four should look like. You can see that line that's formed by leaving the front loop unworked and then also the sides are starting to come up on your basket. And so we're going to join to the top of that chain three and chain three. Now this row is where we're going to begin working in our front post stitches. So I'm going to show you when you're working uh, double crochet stitches or any stitch, the post portion of your stitch is this right here. Each one of these is the post portion of your stitch. We don't normally stitch there, we normally stitch on the top. So to form the basket weave, we've, our chain three is our first double crochet, and then we're going to do a regular double crochet in the next stitch. And now in the next two front post stitches, we're going to stitch a front post stitch. And the way we do that is we're going to double crochet, so we're going to yarn over and we're going to take our hook and go right through that front post of the stitch, not the top, but the front post. And we'll yarn over and pull that through and then we'll just finish our double crochet. And we'll do that on the next one also. We'll go through that front post, yarn over, pull, oops. Lost my loop, we'll try that again. Yarn over, go through that front post, yarn over and pull it right through, and then finish our double crochet. And you can see the front posts on the top of the stitches. And then we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two double crochets. One, two. So there's our two stitches, and now we're going to stitch two front post double crochet stitches again. So yarn over, go through the front post, yarn over, and finish our double crochet. Yarn over, go through the front post, yarn over, pull it through, and finish our double crochet. And then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next two stitches. And you can see how that's beginning to look. 
two regular double crochets, two front posts, two regular, two front posts. And we'll do this all the way around our row. And that's what's going to give us this right here. See the, the difference in the texture? And then once we do another row, then we'll do the opposite that'll give us this basket weave look. All right, so let's finish this row. One, two, make sure you count, make sure there's two stitches between your front post stitches or you'll get off count. That's another tip that I have done before and gotten off count. All right, so yarn over. Go through our first front post and finish our double crochet. Yarn over, go through and finish our double crochet. And then two regular double crochet stitches. And we'll repeat this all the way around this row. One, two. And then we'll join to the top of that chain three like we usually do. So this is what your row should look like. And when you get back over here, you're going to join to the top of your chain three. And for this row, <clears throat> row six, we're just going to repeat what we just did. So our chain three counts as one double crochet, and then we double crochet in the double crochet. And now it's really easy to find our front post stitches. So we're going to stitch a front post in the next two stitches, which are front post stitches. And then we'll stitch one regular double crochet in the next two double crochets. And then we'll stitch one front post double crochet in the next two, which are front post double crochets that we're stitching in. And then we'll stitch one double crochet and the next two double crochet. So basically we're just repeating on row six what we did on row five. And you can see clearly the front post stitches and the regular stitches and then it's easy to find where to put those front post stitches. But make sure you're lined up because you want to put your front post and your front post on this row. This way when we do the next row where we're doing the opposite it lays really pretty and you can distinctly see the basket weave. So let's finish this row exactly like row five. Two front post stitches, two regular double crochet stitches. One, two. Whoops. There we go two front post double crochets and two regular double crochets all the way around this row and join to the top of the chain three with a slip stitch. So now that you know exactly how to make a front post stitch, this next row is going to be a piece of cake for you. We're going to be doing it the opposite of what we just did. We're going to be putting front post stitches in our regular double crochets and putting regular double crochets in our front post stitch. And that's what's going to give us the cute little basket weave texture. So we joined with a slip stitch, but we didn't chain three. And that's because this first one is going to be a front post stitch. So we're going to yarn over and go underneath that chain three from the previous row and stitch a front post stitch. And then we'll do that to the next double crochet, making another front post double crochet. And see, that's the opposite of what we were doing. So now we're going to place one double crochet in the top of these next two stitches 
which were front post from the previous row. So now we're to the two regular double crochets and we're gonna put a front post double crochet in the front of each of those. So we go through and do it just like we did before, stitching through that front post of that regular double crochet. All right, so now we're to two front post double crochets. So we're just going to stitch a regular double crochet in the top of those. One and two. All right, now I want to take a second so you can look at that and see how that looks. Let's turn it this way. So our first two stitches were front posts instead of regular double crochet. Then we stitched two double crochets, one in each of the next two front post stitches. Then we stitch two front post stitches and one in each of the regular double crochet stitches. And then one double crochet in the top of the front post stitches. And so you can see we're doing the opposite of what we were just doing. And like I said, let me hold this one again, so that we get this basket weave effect. We're doing the opposite of what we did on those two rows. So, back to what we were doing. We're to two regular double crochets, so we're going to put a front post double crochet in each of those. One and two. Now we're to the next front post, so we're going to stitch a regular double crochet in the top of each of those. And we'll do this all the way around and join to the top of the chain three with a slip stitch. I think this pattern is perfect for this yarn. Turn it again so that you can see how it's supposed to lay. Isn't that just gorgeous? So wasn't that easy? Once you learn the front post stitch, it's really easy and it makes a beautiful texture. Now we did one row the opposite and we need to do another row the opposite just not the opposite of this row, but the opposite of the first row. So we're gonna stitch this row here, which is row eight. We're gonna do it exactly the same way that we did row seven. So we didn't chain three. We're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go through that front post and stitch a double crochet. Then we're gonna go through that front post and stitch a double crochet. Roll up some yarn there. And then we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two double crochets. And then again, one front post double crochet in the next two stitches, which are front post double crochets. And then one double crochet in the next two. And we're going to repeat this all the way around again. And this will give us, like I said before, the nice basket weave look on our basket. So just to recap, two front post double crochets, one in each of the next two, and two regular double crochets, one in each of the next two double crochets. And again, make sure you're lined up so that your front posts are in front posts and your regular double crochets are in regular double crochets so that we get this nice basket weave look. Isn't that just gorgeous? I just love the way this yarn works up with this pattern with the front post basket weave rows. So now we're done with our basket weave rows. Now, if you want to make your basket taller, you certainly can continue opposite of what we did. But this is as big as I want my basket. I'm going to be using these for decoration on my entryway, so I don't want them too big. Now, I'm going to be changing colors, but I'm not going to cut off my purple yarn because, let me show you on this one, I'm going to do a trim in gray instead of in purple, and then I'm going to come back and do a purple handle. And so I don't want to cut off my handle, uh, my yarn here, so we're just going to let it hang. That'll give me one less thing I have to weave in. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a nice snug um, chain one. And I'm going to just put it to the side like that. 
And this is something that I do occasionally, if possible, to keep me from having to weave in a couple more ends, just to keep it a little bit more tidy. So I'm going to join in my gray. This is called Greyhound. And I'm going to put it right here next to where I started. And just pull that loop through and chain one. And then I'll snug that down, leaving me enough to weave in. And all we're going to do is single crochet around the trim of the basket. And that just makes it have a nice tidy edge. So we're just going to go through both loops and single crochet across the top of the basket. And one thing that I learned about working with this particular basket style is that the, this row needs to be just a wee bit snugger. Maybe bring in your tension just a little bit so that the edge of the basket um, sits pretty and has a nice tidy edge, I guess. I just liked it better when I snugged it up a little bit. So we're just single crocheting around the edge of the top of the basket. I completed the edge of my basket and then I um, joined to the top of that first single crochet and I'm going to go ahead and cut this yarn. I'm going to pull that up and now I'm going to go behind that stitch, put that loop on there and pull that loop through and tie off to the back and that just gives me a nice um, finished edge on the front of my basket where I don't have that big uh, like knotty portion and then we'll weave those in in just a second. So the next thing we're going to do is make our handle and um, we're going to get put that loop on our hook that we left from our purple and we're going to make sure we're lined up nice and even and we're just going to go right in and through that first gray single crochet that we did, pull up a loop and chain one, and then we're going to chain 30. I chained 30. I want to try not to twist our chain, and so I lay it out so the braid is flat, and then I line up <clears throat> evenly across my bag and join that to one of the single crochets right across with a slip stitch. And then we're going to slip stitch in that next one and chain one, and then we're going to turn because we're going to single crochet right back up the side of that chain. So we'll just go right in that first chain and single crochet, some more yarn out here, right up that chain. There we go, my loops got a little loose. So we're single crocheting right up this chain and we're going to single crochet all the way to where we get back over here and then we'll join again. So one single crochet in each chain across. After I single crocheted back up my chain making sure that I didn't twist, I joined back here to the top of that first single crochet where I started and then I single crocheted in the next stitch and tied off and we do have some strings to tie off and let me pull it um, wrong side out if you have a hole in the center of your basket thread your needle with that yarn tail that's left and all you need to do is go around those stitches from that first row where we started around that circle, gently pull it in so it closes that hole, and then go up a stitch or two and go back the other direction. And I'll do that a couple of times, making sure that the center is nice and neat, and then my tie is not gonna come undone, and then I'll clip it. 
Now, when you're doing weaving in your ends and you have two colors, it's real important you stay in the color that you're working with because if I were to weave this in in the purple portion, it might show through to the front. So I'm just gonna stick to the gray where I stitched with gray and make sure you go through stitches, not through holes or it will come undone. And I usually go again one way, then I go up a stitch and I go back the way I came. And that's gonna make it weave in nice and tidy. And I've already done this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip those. Because we want our basket to be nice and neat and tidy. So here's the basket itself. Here's the bottom. Looks really nice and neat. Here's our edge where we did our, we stitched in the back loop showing that, that edge. And here's our back post, front posts I mean. Front post stitches, not back post stitches. On the front for our basket weave look. We did a trim of the gray and then our handles. But this basket needs some embellishment. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the flower, but you can do any embellishment that you want. You can just add a button or two. You could add a little bunny head or a carrot or anything that you would want, a little chicky um, button or applique that you would want. You don't have to do the flower. But I liked the flower on this one with a button for the decoration that I'm gonna use in my entryway. So I'm gonna show you how to make the flower. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make a really easy six petal flower. We're gonna start with a slip knot and chain two. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to stitch 12 single crochets. So we'll go right in that second chain and stitch 12 single crochets. All right, let's count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now we're going to join to the top of that first single crochet and chain two. One, two. And this is what it looks like. And again, we'll close that hole with our tail of yarn. And we're going to go in the next chain and we're going to stitch three double crochets. One, two, three. We're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to go right back in that same chain and slip stitch. And one petal is made. Now we're going to go in the next single crochet and slip stitch and chain two. One, two. We're gonna go in the next single crochet and stitch three double crochets. One, two, three. Getting a little yarn barf here. We're gonna chain two. We'll go right back in that same stitch and slip stitch slip stitch in the next stitch and chain two. Two petals made and we'll do this four more times for a total of six petals. three petals made. So I repeated it for three more petals for a total of six. I joined to that first single crochet and I'm going to tie off. Leave yourself a nice piece of yarn so you can sew this onto your basket. So let's turn our flower over 
and let's close up that hole in the back. And we do it exactly like we did the basket bottom. We just go around the stitches from that first row. Gathering as we go, gently. So the hole's nice and closed up. Go up a couple stitches and go back the other direction. And then we'll tie that off. So the next thing we need to do is add our button. If you want a button, you don't have to put a button on there but I want a button and I chose this pretty little polka dot button. <clears throat> so I'm going to thread my needle and I'm using the purple so that it will match a little better. And I'm just going to come up from the bottom, go through those holes. It's pretty thick. There we go. There we go. The yarn's thick, so we want to make sure the button holds. And all I'm going to do, because this is for decoration, if it's going to be used a lot, you can put a few more stitches through it if you want. But I'm just putting this on to hold the button. So I'm going to tie a couple of knots there. And I'm just going to clip that. We'll set that aside. And now my flower is ready to go on my basket. So I'm going to use that tail that I left. Let's see, both sides look pretty good, so I'm going to put it on this side, just like that. So I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to go under, and I don't want to attach the petals down, I just want to sew around this center. So I'm just going to go in and out like this, down and back and around, just going around the flower, making sure that I go all the way through the basket so it stays put. See my stitches in there. I'll make sure it's going to stay put and I'll just use up the rest of my yarn just going in a circle. And then I'll just go to the back since I'm done and I'll weave it through a couple of those stitches. Now you can't help but have a little bit of the other color showing through and that's another thing you can do this in as many colors as you want or do it all in one color it's totally up to you I'm just going to give that another little knot because I didn't like the way that pulled and a lot of times I'll do this unless it's something I'm going to wear next to the skin or something I don't want to knot but I will if I need a little extra that I think it will look better with so that it'll stay put all right, so there's our flower. There's our basket that we made using the orchid with the gray. And then here's the one that's the opposite. <laughs> 